Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you out there, ladies and gentlemen. And definitely, there are a lot more ladies added to this mix every day, and that's fantastic hearing about all of you into the new crypto environment. So today, I want to discuss the application and soon release of another area with the Loopring protocol. This is something I was talked about a while ago. I did do some research about this before, and I stopped because it goes very heavy, and I could only dig so far. But I think when I started digging into this, you, you get to a certain point and you, of course, you had a roadblock because of the topic about it. But if you zoom out and you look at the broader picture of the whole implications of it, you get a, a, a better understanding of the value with the ZK rollup and just with the loop ring token itself, which is the more I have dug into this in the past, um, since November 5th, this came out, um, this patent application, the more I saw the value of it. And it's, it's pretty amazing. Um, because you, it's hard to put a price value on something that has such and will have such, hopefully, um, a broad, broad purpose. It was just pretty mine. Anyway, let's get, let's get into this. So I want you to take this information that I'm doing today, discuss it with some others, but please add more input down below in the comments. Add some thoughts, because this is the discussion conversation about the loop ring protocol and the patents. The patent is the main idea because, of course, we can only get so far with information as only so much has been released. Now, Loop, Loop Ring has already taken some attention online with the GameStop marketplace. We know about this and everything else. But, of course, there will be some more hints and clues going on with the Loop Ring blog and everything else we can dig into. And that's important to get the greater picture to understand the value and the direction with the protocol and the white paper and everything else. Now, the founders of Loop Ring, they're from China and they're headquarters in Shanghai, and they do have some other offices in some other countries. And that's very important to understand because this is setting the stage for the recent patent application uh, for use of the protocol in the soon to be released Chinese digital currency. The Chinese digital currency from the Central Bank of China. Yes, this is the bigger picture. Now, now I'm going to put this screenshot up here and I want you to take a look at it. This is the tier system and I'm going to talk to you about this to your system a little bit later, but to understand the provenance and the idea of what's happening. Now, this is just a protocol. The, the, the protocol is, is part of 80 different patents that have been applied for to get a full foundation for the Chinese digital currency. Now, all right, now I'll get, let's get back off that and we'll get back to the discussion here. Now, what, what other protocols can claim They've been allegedly working on, you know, they've been working on this project or this game. But this protocol is working on one of the largest digital currencies and probably will be the first one released. They're working very silently, secretly on this, and they have talked about it online for a few years since about 2018. But I'm going with my gut feeling. I'm going to say this is going to be the first released digital currency backed by a world Order. I mean, this is just a government that is just, we know about the Chinese system and everything else, but to fully go ahead with an Asian currency, I originally would have thought it would have been Korea or Japan, but I guess they're more hesitant about doing this. But for the direction that China is going, it makes sense to me. Um, now, all of, again, all this information is allegedly based upon some patent information. This is important because nothing has been approved yet. Nothing has been publicly out there there's some hints and clues that are dropped and we can yes we can claim this but in, until there's 100 percent satisfaction and proof of this it's to understand because is there now if you really want to get bored <laughs> if you really get bored i want you to go through the patent files application i'm sure if you've already seen them but i'll link them down below very heavy to lingo and they're pages and pages long but you really have to, to zoom out because it's enough to make your head spin now the bigger picture lies hidden among all the recent news and also layer two ZK rollup release all information and all this more to come. Now, why is this a bigger picture deal than it feels like just a small thing? No, this is you if you have to zoom out and see the bigger picture, because this is like a stealth fighter. This is like an invisibility cloak. The ZK rollup and loop ring. All right. Only when it, everything is released and the mainstream companies like GameStop, it's released and it's in the basically it's in nature. It's in the whole ecosystem. It's operating. It's operating already, but when it's foot to full use, this is important because it's going to make a thermal nuclear blast in the markets, crypto exchanges and beyond. 
Now, Ethereum Layer 2 is not going to be done for a few more years. But for right now, this is not going to serve as a long-term permanent fix, but the ZK rollups are going to serve as a, you know, side chain and different options, different variabilities on layer two to go on it, on a lot of different on-ramps and off-ramps to get things done. And that's the important thing. I think that is why now China has taken this on because it sees us as the easiest, safest, and most secure protocol to use. Now, let's take a look at the, all the news. Of course, we know the news from all of recent past summer. The Chinese regulatory action they strictly prohibits exchange of cryptocurrencies for legal tender. They don't allow providing information or pricing services for cryptocurrency. Even trading in cryptocurrency derivatives has been banned. This has been banned so many times, but this is going to stick. This is going to stick now because these measures are going to apply to everything. All right. Also to overseas exchanges. Any kind of services that apply overseas exchanges cannot operate within the country's borders. Why? Control. They have to control the flow of information, the flow of money, and to control everything that's going on. We know about this, as you can see the news and what the way they do everything else in the finance sector and companies and everything else. Now, this whole this whole application goes in great depth, and it, it's very heavy in the wording, okay, as all applications do. But again, this application's patent application is part of a vehicle. There are 80 different patents going on. It's all of this, this protocol here. It's a vehicle for the digital yuan. All right. And it's set to roll out as early as 2022, which is coming up very, very soon. Now, this patent take an average 10 months to get accepted. All right. Now, again, this is just one tool and the whole crypto basket of, of over 80 patents filed. But it is a huge one because of what and how the loopring protocol works. All right. Now, you're probably asking yourself, OK, why do I care about this? Why should I care what the Chinese are doing? All right. You told me about the bank system, but it's important to know your system. Know what's coming and understand what's inside it, but also understand as best as you can to understand its value. The loop ring technology has value, not just this value, financial, but just basic value as a protocol and how it's used. All right. Now, let's get into a little bit about the Chinese, that's called the CBDT, all right, the Central Bank Digital Currency. This is what it's going to be called. That might be called a coin. Um, it's a proposed digital legal tender, essentially issued by the PBOC. That's the People's Bank of China. All right, I'm going to go through these two technology links, and I'll try and link them down below as I talk. Now, all of this is going to be backed one by one by their fiat reserves. It aims it's going to replace the MO supply. Now, what is the MO supply? Take a look here. And this is the different layers of the cash. All right, this is important because through this digitization of cash and forward, this is also going to run the credibility of the central bank. This is very important, the credibility of the central bank. And the central bank relies on the credibility and sustainability of the protocols on the Ethereum layer. All right, because some of the core features relate to the manageable anonymity of encryption, along with, you know, the CBDC. But also they require a bank account, but may not require KYC. We'll see how things work with this, but also to use the currency. Through the Chinese system with security and private sector and policing, we know about what, what all that is. So, again, take a look at this, at this tier level here. Because in the, in the top section, we have the central bank. The middle bank is the commercial bank. And the very lot, the bottom tier, those are the users, those are the regular average day people, and how they're going to be able to access everything. So, it's, it's built to basically, so it's got, I'm talking about a two tier system with the users and individual banker people like you and me down below. So, a two-tier system, the CBDC, they'd be distributed through the two distinct layers. One is the central bank and the commercial banks, right? And then layer two, they're talking about the commercial banks and individuals and businesses. That's part of how they wanted to operate. So the tokens would be issued by the central bank and then distributed to the public by commercial banks. Consumers and businesses, they would download a mobile wallet and swap the yuan for the cryptocurrency, which they can be used to make and receive payments. All right, this is important because right now in Asia, we do do a lot of paying online just with our cell phones. We pay through different cell phones. We pay at 7-Eleven. Any kind of anything we want to use, we can use the cell phones. In China, they use a more heavily advanced system to pay for everything through their phone. And different apps, you can add money and use a line, if it's a WhatsApp, whatever the currency and the protocol they're going to use, whatever wallet is going to be accepted and just implemented like wildfire throughout throughout China. It's going to be a very huge, huge deal. 
And of course, it has to have be very integral because it's going to be integrated tightly into the existing banking system now. And that, of course, is being set up. Hopefully, it's almost finished. We'll see about 2022. Now, if this protocol, Loopring Protocol, can handle the network of this financial transactions in the Chinese market system, then this is good enough and has some serious, serious value. It, it, and it's just mind-numbingly pretty cool. Now, value is another topic I'll get getting into more and, and more because it, to really understand the value of cryptocurrency and NFTs, you have to step back and we have, almost have to apply another idea of thinking is outside of fiat money. We're going to new era, new design, and uh, I'll talk about a different bell curve that I'm kind of working on and kind of changing a, a different bell curve for the innovation of technology. It doesn't really apply to this because this is, again, this is a whole new paradigm. There's a whole new shift in the ecosystem with, with money. And China, again, they're going to be going head on into this to, again, set up their own digital currency. It's pretty awesome. And Loopring is holding and investing with them. I'm glad we got in early. Pretty impressive. So all of you, please leave some comments down below. There's a lot of unknowns because dealing with the Chinese government and dealing with any patent applications and process, there's a lot of secrecy, of course, for corporations and other things like this. Only stuff that's in, online right now is available. And we have to do and take and look at the bigger picture, look at different angles. And of living because I do live here in Asia, I do have a better understanding of how some things work. I did have some access to some bankers in Hong Kong. Um, I have not been able to reach them since the protests, but um, to reach out to people in different banking, I have been reaching out to people and to get their idea about the release and their thoughts about it. It's going to be interesting because it hasn't hit the mainstream media yet. So we're ahead of the game. Yeah, so put your feelers out there. Shoot some comments down below. And uh, quite interesting that we're dealing with this kind of background knowledge. It's pretty intense. But again, I'm not a financial analyst. I'm not an economics major. But just getting into this and sharing and just doing deep dives is fantastic. Learning and continuing to learning to keep investing. So all of you, have a great weekend. It's Friday. It's getting colder. Thanksgiving in the U.S. is over. Thank goodness Christmas is coming. And uh, yeah, then Chinese New Year. That's, that might be another big date, Chinese New Year. I'm going to get into that too in the next video as I dig dig more into this. So, I think 12 minutes isn't long enough for this video. I try to make it short and sweet, but some things need more time. Game on.